Well, happy Easter Sunday to New Hope family and friends. This is the Sunday, right? I mean, every Sunday is important. Every day is important. But what makes Easter so special is that it separates us, Christianity, from all other religions. Because while everyone else is worshiping some statue, some idea, some, some concept, we are worshiping a God who is alive and well. We're worshiping a God who left his throne in glory and his throne in heaven to come and, and not just live among us, but become a man, the God man, 100% man, 100% God, in order to take our place on the cross. And then the cool thing about it is he didn't stay dead. And that's what we're going to talk about today. He did not stay dead. He, he laid in that tomb. And then on the third day, he rose from the dead. And that just doesn't just give us hope because we can have someone who forgives us of our sin and has the, the power to do so. But he also has the ability and the power to speak over death. So whatever you're facing today, I pray that you have hope. I want to give a quick shout out to Pastor Ryan for uh, providing daily devotions this week during Holy Week, really giving us a little bit of perspective this week as, as he walked through you know, what Jesus and his disciples are going through leading up to the cross, leading up to the empty tomb. So thank you, Ryan, for, for doing that. Also encourage you to stick around at the end of the message and the prayer today because our praise team has been working on a song to, uh, to lead you into worship. And I just I love the idea of us just wrapping things up and then just gathering and worshiping together where we are in our homes, our couches, and our living rooms, or around the, you know, the kitchen table. Wherever you are, I pray that you would truly take this opportunity. I love the idea of all of us not just listening and growing and learning together through God's Word, but also gathering together uh, and just singing the praises of our risen Savior and Lord. So, so again, thank you for being here. Happy Easter. I pray that you're doing well and that uh, this speaks to you a little bit into your life right now. So I want to talk to you uh, about a very familiar story. We're going to find it in John chapter 11. In fact, that's where we're going to be all through uh, the message today. So we're going to be in verse 1 and verse 3. It says, Now a man named Lazarus was sick. He was from Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. And then we skip over to verse 3. So the sisters sent words to Jesus Lord, the one you love is sick. Now, what we need to know about the Jewish customs in that day, it was customary for Jewish families who live close to Jerusalem, and Bethany would have been close enough to Jerusalem. Jesus and disciples would have traveled from the Galilee area, which is where Jesus spent 75% of his ministry in that community. And they would travel to and from Jerusalem at least three times a year to make their sacrifices and do their thing because he, he wanted to, to buy into that old system before he changed the whole system of what church looked like. Okay, So as they're traveling from Galilee all the way up to Jerusalem and back, while they're there and while they're traveling through, they needed a place to stay. Well, again, it was customary for these families, these Jewish families, to provide their homes for them. So they open up their homes. They would let these guys stay with them. They would feed them and care for them. And that's just the way it worked. It just so happened that Mary and Martha and Lazarus would have been the home that Jesus and maybe you know, a couple, two or three other of his disciples would have stayed with him with that family. So we need to know this because it's important. It's important to understand that Jesus had a close relationship with Mary and Martha, and especially Lazarus. And why this is important is because they don't really even just say the name. They don't even have to say, hey, Lazarus is sick. They send word, but they just simply say, hey, the one you love is sick. So can you really relate maybe to what this family is going through? Can you relate to them feeling helpless, the feeling hopeless, that they, they're turning to Jesus because he's the one they've always turned to and they've, they've been around him. They, they get the idea of, of at least who he is and how powerful he is, how compassionate he is. So they, they send to him trusting that he's going to come back. So, so maybe there's someone out there who's going through something a little bit like this. 
someone you love, someone you care for, is hurting or sick or whatever it may be. So it, it could be a, a disease. It could be uh, an addiction. It could be a loss of a loved one that you've experienced recently and you're just trying to heal from that. I know that some nurses in our church family are dealing with something you know that, that really breaks my heart because uh, some of you are you know, having your family stay uh, with grandparents or with loved ones during this time because you're just super cautious and anxious about potentially spreading whatever you're fighting against. Um, and then some of you are wearing masks even at home because you're, you're afraid of spreading what you've been fighting against and bringing that home to your family. And so you're, you're anxious and you're, you're worried. Uh, you're concerned. If you don't want to call it worry, you're, you're concerned. You, uh, you're going through something and you're just like, I don't know how I'm going to get through this. I, I, I trust God is good. And you're calling out to God and that's who you're calling out for. But you just don't know how this is all going to work out. Some of you have lost your job, and my heart breaks for you. And if you haven't lost your job, maybe your hours have been greatly decreased. Your paychecks are, are less, and you're just trying to figure out, when is all this going to end? You know that you need to call on God, and you, you've reached out to us to, to pray for you and do what we can to help you. But I want you to see how Jesus responds. Because I want you to think about how you think Jesus should have and, and would have responded. Well, it's, it's the opposite of what I would have assumed he would have done. And maybe you feel the same way. We, we pick up the story again in John chapter 11, verse 4. When he heard this, Jesus said, This sickness will not end in death. No, it's, it's for God's glory so that God's Son, he's talking about himself, may be glorified through this. So the worst thing is happening, and Jesus says, This is for my glory. And they're supposed to find comfort in that. But if you're going through something, you're not really finding comfort right then and there when you're going through it. And God is saying, hey, this is going to be for my glory. I'm going to do something powerful through this. I'm going to do something. You're going to see it, but you may not see it yet. So you've got to trust me. And so everyone is assuming that he would immediately return to Bethany because he's close to this family. They knew that. The disciples knew this. Mary and Martha knew this. Lazarus knew this. He's the one laying sick in the bed going, where is Jesus? Why hasn't he come yet? But Jesus goes back to what he's doing. He, he just goes back to, to ministering, to performing miracles, to meeting needs, to praying with people. And for two days, he just keeps hanging out. At least that's what they're thinking. The disciples and Mary and Martha and Lazarus who are waiting anxiously for him, this messenger that went and said, hey, I, I, he's already back now. And he's saying, hey, I gave him the message. I don't know where he is. I don't know what's going on. I, but he's not really just hanging out. It's not like he was doing nothing. He was actually doing what he came to earth to do. He was ministering to the very people that he was with. And so the third day, <laughs> like, where is he? Well, finally, Jesus says something like this. Let's go back to Bethany because Lazarus has fallen asleep and we need to go wake him up. I, I, I believe it was truly that casual, that just kind of, hey, all right, we're done here. Now let's go do what we need to do there. And I want us to look at three different characters in the story who, who are experiencing a little bit of, of death inside. And that may sound really dramatic, but if, if you're in a mess... If you're in a crisis, that's exactly how you feel. You, you feel like there is no hope. I, I'm trying to see the light at the end of this tunnel. I'm, I'm trying to see the silver lining. But And so maybe you're experiencing or have experienced, and not just in this crisis that we all know about, but maybe you're dealing with something even more personal in how it relates to you. And so maybe one of these characters is going to speak to you and maybe we can offer a little bit of encouragement and perspective in it. So, so if you're one of those note takers, you printed it off, here you go. Number one, maybe you're dead in your doubts. John 11, verse 16. Then Thomas, also known as Didymus, glad we can call him Thomas, right? Said to the rest of the disciples, let us also go that we may die with him. Now, there's a lot of things we could say about this and read into it, but there's a lot of debate about this, the tone maybe of, of, of Thomas's phrasing here. So I'll just say this. Thomas was the, 
I need all the facts, guy. And maybe you can relate to that. Thomas knew and all the disciples knew that what awaited them in Bethany wasn't just this family they loved, but by this time in Jesus' ministry, he had, he had offended so many people, so many powerful people, that there really were people that were plotting to kill him, pro plotting to imprison him. And so, in my opinion, I believe that Thomas is saying, hey, we're going to go with you because we, we've decided to follow you. But Thomas is also thinking... I don't think this is going to end well for us. And so, so we're going to go with you because we've decided to follow you. But man, this does not look good. And so we've all kind of struggled with some level of doubts in our life. And maybe, maybe you've kind of thought to yourself something like this. How's God going to get us out of this? And not just the how, but when. What, what's this going to look like? when it's all said and done. What, what's this going to look like a week from now? What's this going to look like a month from now, five years from now? When is everything going to be back to normal? And will this new normal ever be feel normal? So you're, you're trying to figure it out. You're going to, I don't know. I mean, I trust that God's engaged, but, but how is he going to do it? You just can't get past the nuts and the bolts of it. Or why didn't God fix this sooner? Maybe you're just, again, you don't doubt God. You don't disbelieve in God, but you're just trying to figure it out. <laughs> you're, you're trying to get into the mind of God and go, okay, what is he thinking? What is he doing? Why isn't he fixing all this when we believe that he has the power to do so? That's, that's a doubt. It, it, and, it, and God's okay with that because you know, Thomas is known as doubting Thomas for a reason. I, I think I think there's a level of doubt here. I, I think even, you know, as we look forward to Jesus being resurrected and he comes back in the upper room and Thomas wants to see the scars. He wants to see, you know, everything. He wants to see everything to prove to him that Jesus is okay. But, but the cool thing about Jesus' response when Thomas does that is he doesn't rebuke him. He actually welcomes Thomas's questions. Now, if, if Thomas had wanted to know more information, then yeah, we would have had a problem. But Jesus did make a point that, hey, there's going to be people beyond today, Thomas, that won't see my scars. And they're going to have to believe based on complete faith, not just by sight. And so that's what we're trying to get to is... We can, we can have those doubts. God is, God is wanting us to share those genuine doubts with him, but we need, to, we need to resolve to be okay. We need to resolve to know that God is God, and we may never understand why. We may never get to understand the how, but we need to trust that he's in control. It's all about trust. You may feel a little anxious right now and doubt that God is, is working at how that you see it, but he is working, and we must trust that. Secondly, you may be dead in your discouragement. John chapter 11, verse 20. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went out to meet him, but Mary stayed at home. And some of us are like Mary in that even though she knew Jesus was present, I mean, she, she could hear him coming. She heard, you know, all the, the people in the community, the town, they, they knew he was coming. They knew Lazarus was sick. It was a small community. They were very close to one another. So they knew what was happening. They knew that Jesus had been summoned. And so when they saw Jesus coming, all of a sudden word begins to spread enough that Martha knew and she goes outside to meet him and Mary decides to stay inside. Now, what kept her inside? I don't know the complete answer on that. I, I, I'm not Mary, right? I don't understand completely, but here, here's what I think. I think all she could see was that her brother was dead. She knew Jesus was there, but all she could focus on was, where were you? All she could focus on was, this is happening right now. All I can see is my brother is dead. And some of us have felt that way. We felt like, man, we can't change anything. We see it for what it is and we own it. Uh, we can't change this. And maybe you feel helpless right now. Maybe you're, you're tired of this social distancing thing. You're, you're, you're a hugger like me. You're ready to, to hug other people besides those who live with you. Um, and so maybe if you're not even a hugger, you're ready for a hug. I don't, I don't know because I'm, I'm a hugger, so I don't know what you're thinking. 
Uh, you're so tired of eating the same sandwiches and, and maybe some of you are tired of, of feeling scared about going to work. And so some of us, if we're not careful, we can kind of make light of this whole thing because you're feeling discouraged about things that you want to get out. You know, we want to get out some back to some normalcy and, and there's some real stuff in that. But there's some of you out there that are discouraged because you're having to be out there in the middle of this. I mean, you're on the front lines. And so you're discouraged because you want this to pass. You want more people to stay at home and, and follow protocol and not get out when they don't need to be out. And, and so, so discouragement is coming from all different angles. And, and let me just be as real as I can with you. I, I experienced some of this on Monday. Uh, I don't know what brought it on. I, I, I couldn't put my finger on it. I just was discouraged uh, most of Monday. And I just was feeling helpless. Um, I, I want to be involved in your lives. I want to walk with you for, for those who, you know, we've, we've had someone lost a loved one uh, this, this past week and unable to be there for that. Uh, people that are having to be admitted into the hospital and, um, and going through things that ordinarily, those would be times for me to step into someone's life and be there physically with them or walk with it. You know, us meet in the office and kind of walk through whatever you're feeling discouraged in. And so this face-to-face -face thing, we're, we're unable to do that right now. And so so I guess for me, I just felt so, in, so discouraged. And then all my distractions, right, my to-do list, I, I checked them off because I'm, I'm keeping that on the fridge. The things I want to do because I need I need something. I need some kind of purpose that day. And while there's other things to do, I just for some reason felt like man, it's I just I felt again helpless and I felt discouraged in that. But thankfully Tuesday morning rolled around. And I knew that I had things to do to get ready even for today. And and God just kind of breathed a, a, a new perspective in me is that instead of instead of missing what you can't do be be engaged and find joy in what you can do and so picking up the phone and, and having conversations trying to stay in touch with as many people as you can and making sure that our people are staying connected and so just trusting that God is involved we are gonna feel discouragement that we're humans we, we need people we, we, we crave relationships but lean on Him. Don't, don't just get all in your feelings. Let Him in. Let Him put what you're going through in the right perspective. Number three, maybe you're dead in the delay. John chapter 11, verses 17 and 21. On His arrival, Jesus found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. In verse 21, Lord, Martha said to Jesus, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. And so why four days? Why is that so specific? Well, it was commonly believed, and this was an unbiblical belief, but it was commonly believed in those days that once a person died, that their spirit kind of stuck around for, for four days or for, for three days. And so on the fourth day, they were really dead. And so if you're a Princess Bride fan, this may help a little bit. So, so they may have called this kind of mostly dead. So Lazarus, in their opinion, he was just mostly dead for three days. He wasn't dead dead, he was mostly dead. And so Jesus delayed, because we know this because we're looking at it from way into the future and looking back on it. They didn't know that, but we know that Jesus delayed his time to kind of just prove, even though that wasn't biblical, he knew their culture. He knew that they believed that if he had showed up on the third day, they'd believe, well, he was just mostly dead. And so Jesus just kind of, you know, it, it wasn't really a resurrection, he was just mostly dead. So Jesus wanted to show up when everyone knew that he was dead dead. And so some of us may feel a little bit dead in the delays. We are all wanting this thing to pass. And we are just like, when is this going to happen? When is the governor? When is the president? When, when are these people who are making these decisions? When, are, when is all this going to feel like we're safe enough to kind of get back to mingling and being normal. And I'm longing to be asked when I show up to a restaurant, I'm longing to be asked table or booth, right? I mean, I, I think we're all going to just, just hug the person, hug the waitress or the waiter that welcomes us into that restaurant. But that, that may be just me. But there may be some young ladies out there, you're 
you're kind of waiting on that man uh, to find your man. It seems like all your other friends are finding someone, but you haven't. Maybe there are young couples out there, you're praying like Amy and I, you know, we've spent so many years just longing and desiring to have a child. And it seemed like every time we turned around, this was really before Facebook and all of that. But, it, but at that time, we just kept hearing about all of our friends getting, getting pregnant. And so you're a young couple and you're wanting a child, but now it's in your face. Uh, you, you see the sonograms being posted. You're, you want to celebrate them because you love them and it's genuine. But you're like, when is it going to happen for me? Some of you parents, I mean, you're you're now being homeschool teachers, and so you're like, man, when is this gonna happen? When is school gonna start back? And I'm I'm trying to be patient about it, but I'm losing my cool sometimes. Or maybe you're praying for God's healing over some loved one who's going through something that you can't fix, and the doctors don't know, and we're just trying to work through it. So you're waiting on God, and you're a little bit frustrated. Why hasn't He shown up yet? And then we pick up the story in verse 22. But I know, Martha said, that even now, God will give you whatever you ask. She wasn't putting Jesus on the spot. She wasn't giving him an ultimatum. In fact, I think she came to terms with something like this. Even now, when all hope seems lost, I believe that you can do this. I believe that you can do what only you can do. And then we continue in verse 23. Jesus said to Martha, your brother will rise again. And then 24, Martha gives this church answer. It's the right answer, but it's, it's a church answer. Martha answered, I know he will rise again in the resurrection at last day. It's the right thing to say, but Jesus offers another perspective, which is, it's, again, this is what we're talking about today. In verse 29, 25, Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even though they die. And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Do you believe this? He was saying, you don't have to wait to experience life. I am. I, I am life I am the resurrection. Now, he was speaking a little bit into the future and what was about to happen, but he's again, he's laying a foundation of what's to come because what he's about to do is so much bigger than what they even see. I mean, what they're about to see is amazing. It is life changing, but he's, he's speaking bigger and broader. And so we need to understand that whatever's happening in life, whatever God is doing, it is far bigger and far broader than what we could even understand. So we can't even fathom sometimes when, when we think of the I am, I am the resurrection life. That means that whatever I'm in, he is in it. Whatever circumstance I found myself in, I have life. That this doesn't have to be a dead end. This does not have to be the end. Even in death, I'm promised life. Not because I'm powerful, because I'm good, but because He is. So He says, I am lives with you. And what He was saying is soon will live in you. And the story goes on in verse, verse 43 and 44. When He had said this, Jesus called in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet wrapped in, with strips of linen and a cloth around his faith, face. And Jesus said to them, take off the grave clothes and let him go. Now, find a little bit of humor in this because why did he say Lazarus? Why did he, I mean, they knew who was in there, but you know, there's those who say, well, Jesus was so powerful that if he had just said, come out, then who knows who would have come out? Who knows how many would have come out? So he had to be specific. He says, Lazarus, I'm talking to you. You're the dead guy I'm talking to right now. You're the one I want to come out. I want you to leave where you are. I want your spirit to join your body, and I want you to walk out. What we need to understand is that same voice is, is able to speak to me my name, my circumstance, my storm, my discouragement. So if I'm feeling discouraged, he has the ability, because he is, to speak encouragement. If I'm having doubts, he's able to walk me through it by digging into his word and his presence and his Holy Spirit within me to offer reassurance that I can trust him, even if I can't sense him. And if you're growing impatient, you're, 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 you're dead in your delays, Understand that He is present. Even if we can't see Him or sense Him, 
He is working. You can be forgiven not because you're good, but because He is. You can be set free not because you're strong, but because He is. You feel His presence not because you deserve it, but because He's always present. When Jesus died on the cross, the earth was shaken and it grew dark. And everyone feared that everything was over. This, this whole message, this whole movement that they were part of, they, they assumed that the devil had won. They assumed that the enemy had won. They assumed that, man, this is, this is all over. So they really did have no hope, no peace. And most of them, except the disciple John, who stayed with Mary, the mother of Jesus, all of them scattered. And they scattered in fear. They were, they were fearful of their lives. I mean, it was a logical thing to do. Yet, on the third day, as the tomb was guarded by soldiers and sealed by a huge stone, God spoke Jesus back to life, just like Jesus spoke Lazarus back to life. And the stone was rolled away, and Jesus walked out of that tomb alive and forever sealing our hope and peace in Him. We're celebrating today and every day because we serve a God who is completely engaged and has always been engaged in our life and willing to sacrifice himself in order for us to have life. Are you dead in your doubts, your discouragements, or the delay? Or are you feeling trapped by all the uncertainties surrounding us right now? It, the first step is for us to admit it. The next thing is to answer this question I wanted to come back to is do you believe this? And, and what is this? Well, go back to John 11, verse 25. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me, even though, the one who believes in me will live, even though they die. Jesus is saying, even if we die here, and if we live long enough, we will, if we die here in Christ, we're going to live forever with Him in heaven. So he was saying that even if you're facing something that seems overwhelming, that something that seems like a dead end, know that that's all you can see. Because all we can see, if we're, if we're, if we're performing a funeral, we're, we're there laying someone we love to rest, we're there, all we can see is that body that's lifeless. And I know it sounds more of a bit, but just the reality of what we're talking about, a dead man come back to life, right? And so, so we think about this, we think that's all we can see. And we've yet to see what's on the other side. We have to trust that. We have to trust that there's so much more than this life. And that life that he's offering us isn't just about when this life, when our final breath is breathed and we're gone. It, it, it's more than that. that. That's a great promise to, to buy into and to have hope in. But we can have life now. We can have peace now. We don't have to wait until our lives end here in order to experience life in heaven. We can have life here. Why? Well, that's what the miracle of Lazarus to me, is foreshadowing was Jesus' own resurrection. You see, even though the, the, the disciples experienced this very miracle, I mean, they were there when Jesus called out to Lazarus to come out. They saw him come out in his grave clothes, and they're just like looking at each other. Like, what just happened? I mean, we've seen him, you know, heal the blind. We've seen him heal the sick. We've seen him, you know, heal this woman who's been bleeding for years and years and years. We knew he was powerful, but what? just happened and then you fast forward and it's not even that long you fast forward and Jesus is dead and he's he's in a tomb <laughs> and they're still dead in their doubts and their discouragement and the delay but when he finally came to them face to face and made the point to say hey it's me it's me they were no longer distracted, not just because they had proof, because they needed proof in order for this message to have credibility. You and I, it, it's all based on faith. It's based on the faith that we believe that we serve a God who was willing to risk everything, to risk everything for us, for me, for you. So if you find yourself distracted, 
dead in discouragement, dead in the delay, dead in your doubts. Understand that what you're discouraged by, what you're frustrated by, what, what you're having doubts about is really based on all you can see, not all God can see, not all that He's up to. We have hope today because God is alive, not because He's just living among us, but if we put our faith in Jesus, He lives within us. That same Spirit who raised Jesus back to life can live within each and every one of us. Will you pray with me? God, I'm so thankful that we serve a God who is alive and well, a God who is not disengaged, even though it, it feels that way and it seems that way at times in our lives because we're human. We, we tend to doubt. We tend to get discouraged. We tend to get frustrated and impatient. But help us to truly believe. Help us to truly trust that you are good, even when life is not. And so I pray that you speak directly to our circumstance, speak directly to our feelings, speak directly to our soul, our hearts, our burdens, our concerns, whatever we're facing, I pray that you speak directly to it. Speak life into whatever it is that we may be distracted by. We may be dead end. God, give us perspective today. And if there's those that are here today, maybe even just one that would say, I don't know Jesus. I tuned in today because I'm just having doubts and I'm just not sure he is. And it's Easter, so I decided, hey, I'll give him another chance. Maybe you've been listening and God has been speaking to you. And you're hopefully asking, how do I know Jesus? Well, the way to know Jesus is to simply believe in Jesus. And I want you to pray this prayer with me if you want to believe in Jesus. Jesus, I love you. Please forgive me of all of my sin. Come into my life so that I may have life in you and live the rest of my life for you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you guys so much for being with us. Remember, stick around just a moment. Our praise team, Jennifer and the rest of them, are going to be leading us in a song of worship. And I pray that you truly do participate and engage because we serve a risen Savior. Happy Easter. God bless. Thank you.